quite simple thing to say. Thread I'm going to be using is a, a uni thread AO in white. We just start with thread at the eye. Now we take the thread down until basically you're in just short of the barb of the hook and then remove the waist piece. Tail, I'm going to put a tail on the fly and it's going to be the natural red. It's a Chinese cock hackle. It's going to get one of the larger feathers. And just take one out. Take away the fluff. And I'm just going to bring these fibres 90 degrees from the stem. Just bring them out and see the, that's starting to line up and you hold them. And tear them away. And then length. Looking at least the length of the shank. Now I offer them to my side and bring them up with a turn to sit on the top. Maybe two, just to see how they're going to sit. I'm just going to check my length. I just want to go back here because I'm not happy with that. Let's try, try again. I like them to sit slightly sort of lower. And I'm t using the natural curve of these fibres. There you go, see that's the way they let them to sit. Always go back if you're not happy. Again, offer it to your side and then bring it on to the top with a turn or two. Let me see that. That's a wee bit better. Uh, check the length. It's a wee touch too long. So you bring it in. That'll do it. Now, for the, for the rib of the fly, I'm using a, a fine silver wire. This is going to protect the whole fly. Just a small or an extra small wire does it. Again, now when I'm tying the tail in, I'm doing, I'm working my way down. So I'm not causing too much bulk. And then for, to give the impression of bubbles, which the Crixa, what happens? Basically the Crixa traps bubbles in its body and the fine hairs and obviously so it can go below the water. And this is crinkle flash. Now we've got a length here, it's crinkle flash and pearl, and I'm going to catch it down both sides. This time I'm going to start to work up, and then just carry on up the body, tying in these materials. Just keep going. And then the way back down I'm going to tie in basically some natural cock pheasant tail. Now the, without being a beetle, it's got a back on it, which is quite dark brown. You could use hen pheasant, tail, or, as I say, in this case, this is caught. So, I'm just going to line up these ends, the tips. Catch them on the top. And then work my way down. And as you work your way down, just spread these fibres, just try and get them so they stay in line. All the way down. See the look, that's fine. Now you could use ostrich herald, white ostrich herald, or when I was in Canada uh, earlier in the year I got some, this is natural, uh, white cock, uh, peacock. I'm just going to take two fibres. Now you can get it, I'm just going to line up the tips. And then catch it on the side. Pull it in. Again, work your thread up, tying in the peacock curl. And now I'm going to wind the hair towards myself. Nice and just spread it out. A bit better there. You can see it's nice and fine, not too heavy. Another turn there. Cross the thread, thread onto the hook, thread across the peacock. And I turn onto the hook and that will lock it in. When you bring over the back of the pheasant tail, again you can just run your fingers up, just flatten the, or just getting the pheasant tail to stay in line. It's in a couple of turns and then I'm going to use my nail just to slightly spread it. See how it's sitting. Looks okay. You can bring up the crinkle flash on either side. Just bring the thread over the back. Just going to lose turn or two, 
just to get it to set. Just want this on the side. Make sure it's sitting where you want. You can move it with your nail. And once you're happy, you can trim it, trim it away. It's going to come in with a wee bit of wax on my finger here. And then tidy up. Make sure they're tied in. And this is the important part of bringing the wire. First turn, top of the tail, which protects the back of the pheasant tail. And then work your way up. Just ribbing the fly, as you would normally do. You're looking probably, in this case, with five turns. Cross your thread. And then make sure it's tied in. Bend and break it off. Bring it back up ready to tie in my hackle. It's the same cape, it's a natural brown Chinese. Hackle length. Uh, you can have it quite short. I mean, you're looking towards at least two thirds of the way down the body to give the impression of the the legs. I'm just going to look for a nice hackle here. Now, a couple of turns is good. Could need about a single turn to catch this in. A couple of turns down, pull it back, keep the thread tight. We can break that off. So you'll need a couple of turns, so do one turn in front of the other. Now this is the softest part of the hackle. Then come round with a 90 degree bend, opening out the hackle, and get the thread turns in. And trim away the excess. Maybe a wax there, just to tidy up. Then, save for changing thread, the head's brown in the fly. I'm just going to colour the thread. This is just a brown permanent marker pen. I'm just going to run the tip down the thread. And then, tidy up. Don't be shying ahead of this fly, because it... Crixer does have a very pronounced head size. Let's see. That looks fine. And if you're going to be short, what I'm going to do here is just going to mark it a wee bit longer. And that's it. Simple dressing. Now you can make them slightly fatter if you want, heavier. You'll, you'll get away with that. Or you can keep them quite a wee bit fine, like this one. Look. It's fine, I'll do it. And all I need is a couple of coats of varnish. All the way around. And there we are. And that's just a version of the cruncher, but tied in the colours to give the impression of the the Crixer or what is better known as the Water Boatman. So anyway, I hope we enjoyed that.